Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and I'm here on Technique Tuesday and I'm finishing up my little jacket. I haven't worked on it a whole lot this week because I was away in Boise and I was visiting my daughter because it was our granddaughter's first birthday. Claire turned one. So here's my little jacket that I have and I'm working on it. So you can see in the front, if you notice in, I mean, in the in the front here, I have added uh, buttonholes. It doesn't call for that in the pattern, but I wanted buttonholes just so that I can keep it closed if I want to. So you can see there, I don't know if you can see the little buttonholes that I did, but anyway, it's turning out really cute. And what I love about this project is that it uses scrap yarn. So I'm using my Swino DK scraps because I use Swino a lot and I have a lot of scraps of it. So um, the pattern allows you to use up that excess yarn that you have in your closet. And then in the meantime, we get to learn how to pick up a lot of stitches. You learn seaming, you're taking all these different pieces, knitting in all different directions and joining them together. So you get a lot of technique uh, practice without having it be a great big huge project so it's really fun and if you haven't tried Stephen West's pattern before he's super super creative and he can be found on Ravelry but he has a ton of patterns and um, he is really thinks outside the box so he's a fantastic knitter and a great teacher as well don't forget as we're going along every week we do a prize so for this last week I had these darning needles and one set is the bent tip needles and the other one was the straight set and um, that was for last week and then for this week I was thinking that I would do, do these row counters and one is the regular size the red one and the green one is the mini so you guys help me uh, vote and choose which one you think our customer would like and next week we can send that out in the mail so that's how we do that and you enter by posting comments in that comment section and you get entered to win for the prize for the next week um, so as we're going along don't forget to let us know what you're working on maybe you have a lovely project that you're working on post comments in the comment section and don't forget to let us know what the name of the pattern is and who the designer is because it's great for all of us to get new knitting ideas from you as we're going along so that's totally fantastic and i'll show you my little picture of the jacket so this is my little pattern that i'm finishing up there it is very very cute I love it and it uses scraps like I said so it's so totally fantastic now when I was knitting mine one thing I did notice <laughs> I just um, this little arm here I did my sleeve and I used a needle that was a couple sizes larger for the sleeves because I don't know about you but when you're knitting in the round say doing a sleeve does your tension get tighter I don't know. Mine does. So I like to use a needle that's a couple sizes larger to make sure those sleeves don't get too tight. And so I do that. So I wanted to take a look today at a couple different bind offs. So if you look here, I have these different samples that I have here. And you can see that's sample number one that I have. And then this is another method of binding off. And then this is your third method. So I wanted to go over those three methods of binding off. So we can take a look. When we're doing our jacket, it's gonna require that we pick up stitches all the way along and then bind off. And he recommends the three stitch I-cord stitch. So let's take a look at that and see what we think about that. All right. So if you look at the sample again, here is the three stitch I cord. And I really like the three stitch I cord in that it gives you a lot of structure to your bind off. And especially if you put this I cord in a different color, it gives you, it's just a wow factor. That's pretty cool. The only thing, I guess my concern about using the three stitch I cord for a baby garment is that it really does stick out a little bit. You can see it's not quite as flat as the other two bind offs. So let's take a look at these. So right here, I have this little sample and I just marked off 10 stitches each. So I thought we could first take a look at this, um, the I-cord. Whoops, fine, our working yarn, not our tail. We do not like to use tail because then we run out of yarn before we run out of skill to look at. 
So the first bind off that I wanted to show you is the I cord bind off and it's called a three stitch um, I cord bind off that Stephen West likes to use. And so you would cable cast on three stitches. That's how you start it. And to cable cast on, I stick my working needle in between those first two stitches right through the center of it. And then I would go ahead and wrap my yarn as if I'm knitting a stitch. And then I like to take that left hand leg and throw it in the back of the needle. So now I've cast on one and then you two and three. Okay, and simply what you do to complete this bind off is you knit two. So I would take knit one, knit two, and then you knit two together through the back loop. TBL through the back loop. Then you would slide those three stitches back on that left hand needle. And you do that, that's your pattern all the way across, knitting two, and then knitting those two stitches in the back loop, knit two together through the back loop and just slide it back. So I'm gonna keep doing this a little bit until I get through my 10 stitches and I have 10 stitches left for the second bind off. And we'll take a look at that and see what that second bind off is. Now, the second bind off that we're gonna be looking at is the Icelandic bind off. And I'm particularly fond of that one because it almost gives you the I-cord effect, but um, it doesn't stick out quite so much. And it looks particularly nice with garter stitch, which is what this Penguino jacket has a lot of garter stitch. And when you do around the collar and all that, it's all garter stitch. So it sticks out a little bit, um, but not a lot. The only thing about the Icelandic bind off is if you wanted to do that bind off in a different color, it's not as striking. It doesn't look as good as the I-cord bind off. So that's just something to keep in mind as we're working along. So I'm getting to my 10, boy, 10 stitches can seem like a lot <clears throat> when you're trying to do it on the fly here. I was talking to my sister this morning cause she had gone on vacation with her Harley and um, she, uh, I did my sample this morning while I was talking to her and that flew right on by. <clears throat> it was nice to talk to her though. She had been gone for a week or so and I hadn't been able to talk to her. So very lovely to talk to my twin sister. All right, we're almost at the end and Another thing that the I-cord uh, bind off can sometimes do, although it looks pretty good on here. Sorry, I was trying not to split my yarn. Part of it is my needles are just a little bit small and I always just grab whatever needles I can grab for these samples. And sometimes I should <clears throat> put a little more care into the size of needle that I'm using and it would be easier for me, but that would be too simple. All right, so we're knitting two and then we're knitting two together through the back loop. And I'm going to take, when I get to that stitch marker, I'm gonna take this off and keep working until I get 10 stitches. So you have the next bind off has the same amount of bind off stitches. And that is the Icelandic bind off, the one we're gonna be doing. And so we're almost there. So this is our three stitch I-cord bind off that the Penguino jacket calls for. And I really like the structured look of I-cord. Sometimes what I do when I'm doing I-cord, if it seems like it's getting a little bit tight, you can, uh, you could use a bigger needle. Um, I, what I usually do is the very last row of my work, sometimes I'll add a few stitches to my project, like make one left to across the last row before I bind off. And you know what that does is that get, makes your eye cord just a tiny bit bigger and you can't really see it. Let's see if we have three, six, nine, ten. Perfect. So now we're done with that eye cord bind off. Let's take a close look at it. See how it just rolls right around the back. It's a very finished look, but you can see it's maybe about a half inch thick. So it is, it does stand out quite a bit. It all depends on what you're looking for a tiny baby. I don't know. It might be a little tiny bit um, thick. It's hard to tell. 
So let's take the next bind off and see what this one is. So this first, uh, the Icelandic bind off, you start by knitting one stitch. And then you slip that back stitch back, the stitch that you just knit back on the left hand needle. And then you knit into that second stitch. Okay, there you go. And you slip that back onto the left hand needle and you knit into that second stitch. And you do that all the way across, knitting into the second stitch. It, once you get the rhythm of this Icelandic bind off, it is very easy to do. And um, it is, I, I don't know, I just really like it for doing garter stitch because the edge looks, matches so nice with garter stitch. Okay. And then in just a second here, whoops. Oh dear, now I split my yarn. All right, almost done. So this is the Icelandic bind off. Move that and one more. All right, then we can take a look at the Jenny's. So this is the Icelandic bind off. And do you see how it just rolls around the edge? It's a very garter stitchy friendly bind off. And you see how it does not stick out as much. It lays pretty flat yet it looks very finished and polished on both sides of your work. I use this Icelandic bind off almost every single time when I do garter stitch, I just love it. So now if we do um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, that's another bind off that you can do. With a Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, a lot of times um, there are some people who have problems with this Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off being a little tiny bit um, how shall I say, uh, loose or sloppy looking. And I found for those people, I just have them step down one or two needle sizes from the size that they were knitting with. And that corrects the problem. So I I'm gonna treat this as my knit stitch. And when I do a Jenny surprisingly uh, stretchy bind off, it involves yarn over. So for the next stitch on this, it, since it's garter stitch, they're all knit stitches. And that requires a reverse yarn over, meaning the yarn over goes from the back of your work to the front of your work. And then you would knit that next stitch. And then you would take that yarn over and that very first stitch that was knit and you bind them off. And again, a reverse yarn over, cause we're doing garter stitch, knit the next stitch and then bind that one off. And this gives you a stretchy bind off and it's also very structured looking. It ha it's kind of a thick bind off, uh, similar to the Icelandic bind off or the I-cord bind off. Um, but it is easy to do, especially in garter stitch when you're only doing reverse yarn overs. Um, when you're doing knits and purls, the yarn over for a purl stitch would be yarn over front to back. So um, on here, a reverse yarn over, knit that stitch, and I'll show you what this looks like. Just remember, if you've tried the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off and you find that it looks funny, try and drop down a needle size or two and try it again and see if you don't like it. Because I like the structured look of this bind off. I think it adds, um, it's more substantial than a regular bind off, and I think it looks better in my opinion, um, but dropping down a needle size or two, if you find that it's sloppy, can correct that problem that some people have, and then they can enjoy the bind off as much as I do. And let's take a look and see what we got here. Boop, that's the last stitch, and then I would cut the yarn, but you could see this bind off. See how on the front here, it's very smooth and even looking, and then on the back, it looks the exact same way. Isn't that awesome? It has kind of knit stitch look to the back of it, but it looks very polished and very nice. So either one of those um, bind offs would look great with this jacket, but this first one, the I-cord bind off is what is the pattern Stephen West um, tells you to do for the bind off, but you could very easily um, substitute this Icelandic on it, bind off or the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off, whichever one works for you. And you could see both sides of the work. There's a question from Peggy Mowry. She said, is the Icelandic bind off stretchy too? 
not want to repeat that. Well, it is. It's actually pretty nice. I mean, I um, if you look at these, Which the Jenny this? surprisingly stretchy one. Do you see how this one's a little stretchier than that one? Um, I would say the Icelandic bind off is about as stretchy as the I cord bind off, or maybe a little tiny bit stretchier, but not super stretchy. Um, not as stretchy as the Jenny surprisingly stretchy, but um, sometimes when you're going around, say around the front of your jacket or what have you, like if I'm knitting around this section right here, for instance, around here, um, I may not need around this area. I may not need quite as much stretch. What I want is something looks structured and doesn't pull in, but um, but is still you know defined and nice looking. So that um, Icelandic bind off is very nice. And maybe the three stitch I cord work, uh, people like it as written. There are a lot of people out there that love to follow the patterns as written. And that's totally fantastic if it works for you. <laughs> for me, I'm always looking at something. Can I change it? Can I fix it? And you know, I don't always recommend that because sometimes it'll take me longer to knit something than it might take you to knit something if you're following the pattern and I'm not because I'll I test it and play with it. And sometimes I have to take it out and start over again because <laughs> I messed something up and I'm going, oh, that's why they made it like that. But I have to figure out how things work. That's what I love about knitting and crocheting is that I like to figure out how things work and how maybe I can improve it so I like it better. Um, or maybe I change it a little bit to make it my own. So I love doing that. And that is what keeps me knitting is that. And, and I actually find the harder the pattern, the better I like it. If it's a super easy pattern, well, you'll see me mess it up. I don't even finish them if they're too easy because I will just mess it up. And because I, I quit paying attention, I lose my attention. And anyway, you'd be surprised how many ways you can mess something up when you do that. So I was thinking for this next week, I was gonna go ahead and try this sweet pea dress. You see that? That's the project I wanna do for next week and it's crochet. Can you see it in there, Marcella? Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> there you go. But I was gonna try this. It's a little pinafore and I thought it would be kind of cool. So I'm gonna be doing that for next week. And let's take a look and see who the contest winner was for this week. I know Jim always sticks it on here for me um yes we we talked about that um did you guys vote so for this last week um jim who was what of these um the bent tip one you guys like the bent can you tell me why it is that you like the bent tip because i've never really gotten into the bent tip thing and maybe there's something i'm missing so um these are the little chibis and this was the prize for last week so you guys helped me. You guys decided that the bent tip was totally awesome. And I was wondering if you can post comments in the comment section and let me know why and what you use it for. What makes it easier about the bent tip? Because I usually use the straight running uh, needles and uh, I, I would be curious to find out from you. I would love to know that. And then for this next week, the prize will be one of these kachkachas, the red one or the green one. The green one is a mini one and it actually has a cord that goes around your neck. It's like a little necklace. So you guys help me vote on this and we can send this one out for next week. So let's look and see who the winner was for this week. It's um, Lydia Bach. I hope I didn't crucify your name. Anyways, congratulations. You won the bent tip darning needles. And this little, if you haven't seen these little chibi cases, I totally love them. Number one, they're see-through. So you can see what kind of darning needles you have with you. So you don't accidentally forget to bring something with you. And the second thing that I love about it is it has a screw on lid. Um, a lot of darning needles in different um, containers, they have a snap-on lid, meaning that lid can fall apart, uh, come off in your bag. And so these don't come off because they screw on. So they're totally fantastic. 
So Lydia, all you have to do is contact customer service at Alpaca Direct and give us your shipping address and we can get your little darning needles out in the ma ma mail to you. So that's totally fantastic. So I hope that you have a great week. And this next week, I'm gonna be talking about this lovely little pinafore. It was a brand new pattern that came up on Ravelry and I haven't done crochet for a while. So I thought I would have fun with that. So you guys have a great week and I will see you next week.